I want to talk briefly about how we combine oscillations, that is how we're going to take two different harmonic oscillators and add them together. Um, so in general um, we're going to find that psi is equal to a1 um, cos of omega 1t plus phi um, plus a2 cos of omega 2t plus phi. Um, now this general solution is of course um, a little bit complex and if we just sort of sketch this over here on the right um, we'll do a little plot of the imaginary part against the real part um, then at one time t we might have the first oscillator going up like that and then the second oscillator being at this point um, and then at a later time we might well have the, the first oscillator having rotated round to here um, and the second oscillator having rotated around that first oscillator um, to a new position there. So you can see that the, the second oscillator is rotating around the end of the first while the first oscillator is rotating around the origin. Um, so that's going to be quite a complex motion um, and in the notes we showed that that could be written as a cycloid um, and you can draw that quite easily. I'm interested actually in this, this little podcast, this little screencast in two special cases. Um, so the first special case is going to be when A1 and A2 are not the same, um, and so they're, they're different. Um, the phases phi1 and phi2 are not the same, um, but omega1 is equal to omega2. So that means in terms of the diagram that we've drawn in the top right, actually the angle between the two phases is going to stay constant. Um, so in this case we would draw a diagram like this where we would have um, the first phaser going up somewhere like that um, and then this angle here is going to be phi 1 um, and this length here is going to be a1 um, and then we would have let's just change the color there um, so it's clear we'd have the second phaser up here say um, and then we're going to have the angle relative to the vertical is going to be phi 2 um, and this length here is a2. Um, so what we're doing here is because we have the same frequency we can pick any moment in time um, and when we've done that we can plot the the two phases relative to each other at any other time the only thing's going to happen is that we're going to rigidly rotate the entire thing around the origin. Um, now from this sketch we can find um, the, the resultant, um, so the resultant is going to go up here, um, that should be a straight line, with an angle, with a length amplitude A, um, and we're going to have a net angle around here uh, which is going to be phi. Um, now if we just think about trigonometry, let's draw these two over here, um, so we're going to see that these two different lengths are going to be a2 um, sine phi 2 and a2 cos phi 2. Um, if we think about this triangle, because of course this angle is phi 2 um, and this length is a2, this length down here is a1 and this angle is phi 1. So now this length here is going to be a1 cos phi 1 and this length here is going to be a1 sine phi1. Okay, that's, that's simple trigonometry um, and therefore we can say that um, if you wanted to write it this way you could say that a cos phi um, that's going to be the real or the x component of a of the resultant phaser is going to equal a1 cos phi1 plus a2 cos phi2 we can say that a sine phi is a1 sine phi1 plus a2 sine of phi2. Um, and then from this we can calculate um, that a squared is just equal to a1 cos phi1 plus a2 cos phi2 all squared plus a1 sine phi1 plus a2 sine phi2 all squared 
um, and that's going to give us an a1 squared because we'll get an a1 squared cos squared term and an a1 squared sine squared term. We're going to get an a2 squared for the same reason and then we will get two a1 um, a2 cos phi 1 cos phi 2 plus 2 a1 a2 sine phi 1 sine phi 2 um, and we can just contract those into the standard result the standard trigonometrical result so we got a1 squared plus a2 squared plus 2 a1 a2 cos of phi 2 minus phi 1 that's just a standard identity um, you can derive the same thing using complex numbers if you want, or you can do it with simple trigonometry. Um, the reason I've derived it is just to show you the basic idea, and in particular to show the angles um, and how we get the angles. Um, the use of the phasor diagram is to help you visualize the problem. Um, so you can imagine that as you move into other quadrants, not just in the positive quadrant, you can end up with some angles which maybe don't make sense. It's very easy using an inverse tan um, to get the wrong angle. In fact, we can calculate that um, tan phi must equal a1 sine phi 1 plus a2 sine phi 2 um, divided by a1 cos phi 1 plus a2 cos phi 2. Um, and if you don't get the, the signs right, you can end up with tan being out by a factor of pi. The other situation that you have to think about um, is when the amplitude is the same, a1 equals a2, um, the phases are the same, phi1 equals phi2, but the frequencies are different, omega1 is not equal to omega2. Um, in this case, again, we use a standard trigonometrical identity, so we have psi is equal to a cos of omega 1t plus a cos of omega 2t. Um, I've just assumed that phi is 0 for simplicity, um, and that's equal to 2a cos of omega 1 plus omega 2 over 2t cos of omega 1 minus omega 2 over 2t. Um, and this is the phenomenon of beats that we discussed in class. Um, and so what we have with beating is we have um, an envelope. Um, so the envelope is going to be a, a slowly varying cosine, um, as I've drawn in blue. And I'm going to dash in the inverse of the envelope, um, because that helps us to visualize. Um, and then within the envelope, we have the, the rapidly varying wave, um, which looks something like this um, and that's varying at a frequency of omega 1 plus omega 2. Um, this is only true if we have omega 1 and omega 2 close. Um, this is the behavior we get. So if omega 1 is approximately equal to omega 2. Um, if they are far apart then typically what we have is actually we have a, a rapid oscillation superimposed on a slowly varying sine function. Um, this is when omega 1 and omega 2 differ. Uh, it's it's the, same, the same algebra, it's just a different phenomenon. Um, and beating we've discussed in class, you, you can hear it when you apply, play two sounds which are of close frequency. So we've looked at combining oscillations. Um, I haven't given the general solution. That's just a, a cycloid, and really you need to plot that um, properly using the, the full solution in the complex plane. Um, the overall projection of that into the real plane will involve considerable complexity in the oscillation of the, uh, of the, uh, the length of the oscillator, the amplitude of the oscillator. Um, and the use of phasor diagrams here is simply to help you visualize the result and to help you with the trigonometry that gives you the results.